fix on Dash Radio. Get the sugar. It's Cody Goat Red. What's really goody? I'm about to tell you guys what's really good right now. I have with me an actor and a casting director. Yeah, casting director, producer. Producer. Yeah. Oh, Morehouse so grad. Morehouse grad. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Can we can we get a name? Dave Brown. Dave Brown. Dave Brown. <laughs> Dave Brown. <laughs> <laughs> Sound like he live around a corner. <laughs> So how long have you been in the game for it? Ooh, I've been in the game since 92. Mm. You know, I came out here after graduating at Morehouse. You know, uh, my, my major was film and theater. I came out here and been here since 92. That's so good. been here for a while. 1992. Yeah. That's a minute. Yeah. Don't you think being a casting director and an actor is cheating? Cheating? Almost. I don't know if it's cheating. It's giving everybody opportunities. But can you get the roles that you, like, say if you was had a role and you wanted to put, oh, yourself, put yourself in it? Yeah. Well, you see, I think it's more of you, you when you're it's going like for, art, right? Yeah, producing films, mm-hmm. you know, you sometimes you take on the role as casting as well. Mm-hmm. But and, and creating film and, and putting them together. But, you know, at the, right now, my, you know, the acting is when I came into business, started mm-hmm. doing that in the beginning. So you elevated. 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 I mean, everybody come in yeah. as one thing, like an actor. Yeah. And then you get into... Everything else, like the business, the right. entertainment, the production company, the marketing company, like right. all of that stuff come in. It. So you you said uh, one of your plugs in the Hollywood was Morris Chestnut, right? Yeah, Morris That's was right. the only. He's the first person I knew when I moved out here, okay. and uh, he was pretty much my high deans. Okay. And telling me my do's and don'ts. Mm-hmm. Um, you got to have somebody out here that can to give you that that light to mm-hmm. say, hey. Don't do that. Do this. Yeah. Do that. Because if you don't have that, I mean, you can just just imagine being dropped in Hollywood. Oh, uh, yeah. <clears throat> that could be all bad. Do. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Especially and, back then, too, 1992. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's a good mentor oh, to man. have. Yeah. Hey, the greatest, let me tell you something. My bro is the greatest dude ever. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? He, you don't, you know, he's one of those guys that always bring, whatever, you know, your set, whenever you're on the set, mm-hmm. you as the star are the one that sets the tone for your set. Yeah. He's one of those guys that, all the way down to the the guy that's dealing with the grip mm-hmm. is feeling good about coming to work because it starts from the head. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Wow. It comes down. So he's great dude. That's OG Morris Justin. Yeah, yeah, that's Ricky's that's Ricky. boys yeah. in the hood. Yeah. He gonna, he gonna <laughs> never you know, shake that. You know when you see him now? <laughs> yeah. You don't even think of that no more. He's been in so much good stuff. Yeah. 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 And he, you know, yeah. I mean, it's him. But I mean, you know, like the yeah. volley, he's buff now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He looks yeah. more manly than like as a teen to then. Yeah. So when you see him now, I don't even think of that. I think more of best man. Right. Yeah, things like man. that yeah. than that uh, boys one. in the hood. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, see, I grew up with the best man. And yeah. I thought that Morris was like so good looking and everything. And I was <laughs> like, ooh. Hey, hey my, my, my mom and aunts and all that thought yeah. he was good looking and the boys <laughs> in the hood too. <laughs> So what that tell you? He didn't win decades. You know what I'm saying? A lot of women are crazy about him. Yeah, they, they, he got some good looking brothers. That's, that's right? a good mentor you know, to have. Though, I yeah. call I call Morris Black Jesus. Wow. <laughs> because when he you know he don't go out. You know he's oh, really wow. he's really a home guy. Mm. You know what I'm saying? When he goes out, everybody go crazy. I said, boy, yeah. he Black Jesus. Now anybody seen Jesus? So yo, you go out, everybody <laughs> see you. He's like they go crazy for him. That's dope. So you got a new project that uh, that you just worked on, right? Yeah, yeah. I've been. Um, uh, it's been a blessing with, with, with the film festival, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it, Indie Night Film Festival okay. is the first weekly film festival in the world. Okay. Mm-hmm. And think about this: most film festivals are once a year. Mm-hmm. So my motto is: Why should you have to wait once a year to be seen and miss all this work in between? Yeah. So I'm giving everybody opportunities, whether they be a writer, director, producer, actor, mm-hmm. you know. And I call it my golf course because, and metaphorically speaking, is. Most deals in the world are made on the golf course. True. So if you bring all your writers, your directors, your actors all in one spot, that's you creating an environment where everybody can network with one another and do the things that you want to do to get elevated to the next level. Mm-hmm. So when I started Indie Night, they told me it would never work. Mm. And I said, no, you like my idea. Yeah. And always remember that when somebody tells you it's not going to work, that means they like it because they want to run with it yeah. themselves. Yeah. But I started it, and now I'm six years in. I do it at the Chinese Theater. And it's given that it's, it's it's given that platform to open up, and people are seeing artists, mm. new artists, and also I got people coming back, you know, who just come and bless everybody there, just talking about their journey in Hollywood and what it took to get to where they are. 
Because like I said earlier, just think about being dropped in Hollywood, not knowing where to go. You can't go somewhere. Yeah, somewhere to go. In Hollywood when you come to Indie Night because I bring everybody there. That's Man. Dope, yeah. So I know, you know, as a, a director, you know, I'm sure you've had family members be like, put me in something. Oh, yeah. That's, 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 <laughs> how, how do you deal with that, man? It's always like that. I mean, you know, what you do is this. You want to see the craft first. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. always want to see the craft. You want to know what a person, you know, if they can hold. Because you got to give everybody opportunity. Yeah. I, you know, I say you give everybody opportunity to fall in the face if you do that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But you, at least you know you, you gave them that opportunity. Yeah. You, they can't come back at you and say, you didn't do that at all. No, I gave you an opportunity. Yeah. Now, did you do your homework? Did you learn? You mm -hmm. know, I said there's an art to all of it. Yeah. Everything you do in life is an art. Yeah. <laughs> you know? No doubt. So. Yeah. Question, have you ever regretted giving someone a role after you, you know, basically casted them for that specific role? Do you ever have moments when you're like, dang, maybe I should have casted that other guy or that other girl? Well, you know what, though? I, I've I've casted one, one film that I did. And you know what? It's crazy because when I was casting them, when I was doing this film, the person I was casting with was like, why do you give everybody more than one chance when they're in the room? Because, you know, there's some cast directors just go like this. Thank you very much. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. I'm like this. If you're an actor first, I know what you're going through. So when you come through the door, I know no more, you may be nervous. And I'm going to shake it off. Because I'm going to tell you, auditioning is just like taking the SAT. Mm. Yeah, you study, you, you study hard, not, but then when you get you. to that moment... Right. You may but, 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 lose but, all but, the... But it goes like this, though. They say the test for the SAT is what? A test to say if you can do college work, mm -hmm. right? But not everybody's a good test taker. Don't mean that when they go to college, they can't do the college work. Yeah, true. So true. what I say is it's auditioning. Not everybody's a good auditioner, but don't mean when they say action, they don't rock the role. Yeah. Because there's a lot of people that get nervous yeah. when they're in front of... You think about seven it, you're sitting in people, front of eight seven, people, eight yeah. people in the room. Yeah. You're like, oh. That's what but happened then, to me, man. I was yeah. like, I got nervous. I couldn't even, I was just focusing on them looking at me, and I couldn't get past, like, what I really wanted to do. And right. that's like. But what I do is I go like this. I say, hold on, stop. I say, cut the, cut, cut the camera. Mm -hmm. What's wrong? You good? Shake it off. Shake it off. Let's do it again. <laughs> yeah. Because at the end of the day, it's all about taking direction. That's dope. As a director, you go, okay, do it this way now. Let's see how you do it this way. Mm. And then you see the person can, you know, take direction because that's what you need when you appear as somebody in the film. That's dope. That's like, like installing it. confidence yeah. at the same time yeah. when you know somebody feeling like a little like unsure. Right. And giving them that boost could actually like bring that what you need right out of them. Create believable behavior in imaginary circumstances. That's mm -hmm. what acting is. And that's what, you know, in the first hour, uh, Melvin Jackson Jr. was saying that, yeah. you know, when he's went on auditions, he messes up. He don't get that chance. So to have somebody like you that's actually trying to make people calm down, yeah. trying to break yeah. the ice, so you can, because there may be somebody that may mess up, and then they're really good, but that one moment that they messed up, they just get passed along. But right. you're actually taking the time to give them that second chance because it may be a diamond in the rough that you, you discover. And you never know. Yeah. Like, there's this one cast and director that comes to my film festival once a month. Mm -hmm. Her name is Robbie Reed. She's the biggest casting director in Hollywood. She did all of Spike Lee's movies. She did mm. Harlem Nights. Mm. She's the one that found Jamie Foxx. She found Halle Berry. She found uh, Samuel Jackson, Denzel. Oh. She's the one that made it possible for everybody to get to the next level. And that's my sister. So she comes out to Indie Night once a month looking for talent. Yeah, and now cool. she runs all of the casting. Anything that's on beat, she, she casted the New Edition story. Wow. And Bobby wow. Brown. Wow. Which was great. Both of them. Wow. wow. So, and you know, that was, that's, she that's need to come find Codigo Red. Hey, we about to, we, we about <laughs> to pull up. <laughs> For right. real, come find the fix. Right, you know? go find the we'll fix. Do a, we'll do a cameo yeah, going, in, in a movie going, doing I'm the show, you know. No, I'm going yeah. to Indy Night. I'm, I'm, I'm going to pop up. Yo, we got, should go there. You got to come yeah, check, it check it out. Check it out yeah. I would Be love to. Because it, it's giving everybody the opportunity. And now what I'm doing, it's been six years I've been doing this. So now, Morris is coming. He says, I love this. He comes down and blesses everybody and talks about, you know, his journey and being in the business. But now we're taking it on the road. Mm. And so we're going to be the American Idol for, for films. We're going to do it once a month, though, mm. in Miami, Atlanta, D.C., Chicago, New York. We're going to do it. And we're going to bring all the great films back to Hollywood because there's a lot of great films out there. They just don't know how to get into Hollywood. Mm. They all went to so, Atlanta. Huh? Right. There's a yeah, right. whole lot of, a lot of people that just don't know where to go. Yeah. So Morris is going to host it in different cities. 
and we're going to wow. bring them back. But we're going to stay attached to those films because we have first look deals at the studios. So we'll go there and say, hey, we got something. So mm -hmm. why I want to be the incubator for those filmmakers or if I see talent and I go, this person right here is going to be a star. Y'all need to check her out. Get with an agency. Yo, agency, sign her. Because mm -hmm. she's dope. I'm seeing it on a weekly. Yeah, that's dope. Whereas most people, you wait, you go once a year with all the other ones. So what do you think about the the, the YouTube people that's blown up on YouTube and using that as a direction of, um, of, of not, like, the standards of Hollywood and just going to, like, do it, DIY, doing it yourself on YouTube and then actually blowing up off of that? Well, it's good. Mm -hmm. It's good. But, you know, there's this thing right now where everybody, okay, I grew up on that generation where social media was not a thought. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, Somebody hit me the other day. You got to say, I'm well known in LA. Mm -hmm. And somebody hit me and said, How come you only got 13,000 followers? I said, You ain't. I said, Why do I need to have more? I said, Followers don't make who I am. I said, When I walk in a room and people gravitate me, that makes who I am. Mm -hmm. And so you got to understand it's like Denzel said it the best. He says, If you look at the fact that people are looking off of followers, can you do the art? Mm -hmm. That's what sets the difference. It's not about followers because at the end of the day, you know what they're trying to do is say they're putting all these people that are influenced, social media influencers in films. But you got to understand this. That doesn't sell a film. Yeah. People that are following you on Instagram are following you because they're interested in you, not because they're going to buy a ticket to go watch your film. Mm -hmm. And they did it and it proved that that's not, it doesn't work. So now, you know, when you're going for all distance now, they go, how many followers do you have? At the end of the day, can you rock the role? Yeah, can you rock the oh, so they're actually asking people that on auditions how many followers. Yes. But see, the thing is, I mean, they have it now to where people can get fake followers. So there you go. How much does it even really matter? No matter when they do the research and shit don't add up. And it don't add up. Yeah. I tell you what, if you got eight, eight, eight million followers, mm -hmm. you could take that baseball cap right now and you should be able to sell all those on your which card and you should be rich. Maybe yeah. like 10%. Yeah. That's, that's, what, that's how they break it down. Like, yeah. however many followers you have, 10% uh, of that should buy into should your stuff. Right. You know well, they got the like, the, that's the, not they, they got the uh, what, analytics like, now yeah. to where yeah. it shows. Yeah. I got that app. I was telling yeah. you. Yeah, you it you shows who's people. really, yeah. what's real and what's fake. Yeah, your fake now followers. you can't fake yeah. it no you more. You can't fake it. you can't fake it. And then at the end but of the day, it do go back to the art though. Like you can have all of those followers and mm -hmm. still suck in front of the camera. Yeah, right, <laughs> right. Like, exactly. don't really, like exactly. followers ain't helping you in, in front of the camera right now. Like you mm -hmm. got to put on, and if you don't have that, what charisma for the camera right. or or just the knowledge, yeah. And you, you know what? You, you, you're not gonna sell it. Hey, let me tell you the, the one thing: that camera never lies. Mm -hmm. And if it, it's gonna look at you and, and, and you pop, you got you either gonna pop on screen or you not gonna pop. Yeah, mm -hmm. wow. If certain people you like, damn. <laughs> we got to do another. Uh, we got to go back and uh, figure Cast, out. Yeah, do yeah. recasting. Yeah, because it's yeah. And it's not. And you know, at the end of the day, sometimes it's not about they can't act. Yeah. It's just that they didn't fit the role. Mm -hmm. Because everybody, every writer, every director has their perception yeah. of what they think yeah. that character looks like. Yeah. That's and right. so when you walk in, that's it. Mm. That's her. Mm. That's just hope they can knock it out. Right. Yeah. That's dope. And so there's a lot of you know there's a lot of. Um, you know, right now, I think there's a lot of upcoming talent. And, of course, you know, YouTube is a great way to introduce yourself. Yeah. If you can't, you know, mm -hmm. get you yourself out there. You think it's a good way to, like, shake the ice just to get used to being filmed? In the film, yeah. 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 But I can see that. right now, what I'm all about, man, is reality is taking over so much on TV, man. We need to get back to our Martin Lawrence's, our Jamie Foxx show, yeah, you okay. know, all those shows, D.L. Healy show, you know, those That's shows right watch, there, so. everybody grew up on. Man. But you know, it's funny, like, that you say that, like, because there's a lot of disgruntled actors on those reality shows that are doing interviews that are telling people that those shows are scripted. It's just right. the way that they're filmed to look like a reality show. It's not like back in the day with, uh, was it, um, MTV had the first reality show, which yeah. was, uh, what was the name? Yeah, a house, uh, uh, it was um, not cribs. No, 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 no not no. cribs. It was uh, they all lived in the house. Together. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I can't believe I like, don't remember. Real world, right? Real world, real world, yeah. real world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it wasn't like that. They just filmed the things like real world. But you got the shows like Black Ink and all that. They're all scripted. Scripted, all of them. So, so that's see, what people Martin, that don't know that that these Martin these was scripted. That shit wouldn't have been funny. Well, Martin was scripted to an extent. I'm sorry, if, Mar if Martin was a reality show, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, it, yeah. Yeah. it wouldn't have been funny. If, even if it was a scripted, like, that's what, I know what you're talking yeah. about. Like, those shows, 
the essence of our of yeah. our era is gone. We grew up yeah. over here. And you know, you think about it, like when I say those old shows, Good Times, mm. uh, Sanford and Son. Mm. You know what I'm saying? They These all had were, messages though. What those back then? Yeah. Yeah. Like they all had, yeah, they had messages. Sanford and Son. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't say classic. I mean, Martin Martin had a message. Mm-hmm. The Cosby yeah. show had a message. Like our black shows all had messages. Right. Right now, it's just like Fuck is going on? And we, and we <laughs> now got, it's just yeah, fight, party, party, fight, party, fight, drink, though, party. The reality see, show message. We just ain't had the same. like the guy we just interviewed before you. You know, you, we had we were talking to him about like we have all these like old heads, you know, who don't kind of understand what's going on right now. But then they see the numbers and they kind of like trip out about it. But then you also have this new generation that's like going crazy about well, I'm just gonna do whatever I can to like get some type of attention. Right. It's like. Where is Yo. the art? art but it's gone. like, but where does where do we meet? It's like where do the old heads, you know, telling us we should get back to the real stuff. We should get back to the content, and then this new generation, you know like, how does that? Everybody, it's made up. Everything is made up. Like, think about this. It, it, we knew what models were back then. Mm-hmm. Now everybody's a model because they on Instagram, mm-hmm. and so they put it out there the wrong way though. So I think. It's getting back to the originality of saying what's what's the art of things because you you gotta have talent. Yeah, back the, then you the, had to have the talent. Authenticity is going yeah. On. Yeah, yeah. You had to have talent back then. So, but if you think Martin came back now, do you think? Well, there's ta- there's be talks funny? of that. I yeah. know, but I'm thinking like don't mm-hmm. don't fuck it up. I don't know nah, how you, you know can what? do it without Tommy. Check this out. Well, well they that's, can say that's Tommy passed away. I mean, yeah, but I mean, like, he's a major part of the show. Yeah. Like, that's no. just awkward. The only show that can really come back, like a reboot like that, that has everybody alive still, is Jamie Foxx show. I watch mm. that every night. You know, every I, night I, I still watch, watch that in the Fox morning. Yo, because the Fresh Prince good. lost the father. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So he's You could bring a Living Single back. Every they have single. the whole cast to that yeah, still. Yeah, Living Single. Yeah. Do you think it'll hit hard the same? Yeah, because at the end of the day, followers... You, you got the followers. They, yeah. they know there's no way that Martin can't get back up in it. You know, now see, what I don't understand is like when there's stations like BET. Right. Why don't you try to reboot those shows? You're in control of the audience. Mm. You can put the, because remember those shows were on Fox at one time. Put all those shows back on BET and then give them the creative control to do it the way they did it in the past. Well, what they got to do is license it off, though. Yeah. Well, yeah. See, yeah. So this is a whole it's lot of stuff because yeah, it's, yeah, it's done. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, it's I don't done know that. Yeah, it's done by Warner Brothers. It's yeah. like, yeah. am I... Oh, so, you know what oh, I think, yeah. I think that they should uh, dedicate uh, a channel just for old rerun shows. Even not just the Our Black shows, but like even Well, TV like, Land. Yeah. TV Land? TV Land does that. Yeah, but they... They got the old, yeah, the old yeah, like, you know... I mean, like, all in the, the family like, and all that type stuff. Yeah, yeah. But, but but mix them all together, because yeah. they all we all watch Hogan Heroes and Gilligan's oh, Island. Oh, he hit it. Come on, yo. That like, was a classic. <laughs> Hogan Heroes? You know, uh, you know that? Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. I've, I've only heard. Mash. You're like, Hulk Hogan. <laughs> <laughs> Mash. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. How old are you? Yeah. I'm 38. Okay. Yeah, yeah. so I didn't, I didn't cut school. I didn't cut school. I didn't bend... I'm 35. I didn't, I didn't 35. in front of the TV, I'm but you know, you know, <laughs> but all, all of those, all of those shows, including Amen, Martin, mm. like um, this, just a bunch of them. They all a part of our culture. Exactly. Like all of that shit is gone. Like even the yeah. show, y'all remember Rosewood? Yeah, Rosewood, yeah. yeah. Rosewood is the black version of Quincy. I know you don't remember that, but back in the day, Quincy was a show where mm. he's the black version of Quincy. Mm. You know what I'm talking about? No. Mm-hmm. I guess oh, okay. I'm, I'm old. I'm telling you. Right. Now you good? You just put, up, you just put up, on, yeah, yeah. Okay. up on something to research yeah. later. You know, right. ain't nothing wrong yeah. with that. It's like you know, you see shows and everything just going in a circle. You know, yeah. everything coming back around. And, mm-hmm. you know, I don't think the black exploitation movies are coming back. Like nobody really touched on those to kind of bring them back. But like, I'm gonna get you, sucker. I'm gonna get you, sucker. Because. Cause those they they actually have messages too, mm-hmm. and I think there's a lack of messages that's going on with the films, and the distraction of reality shows like that's actually reality, but that shit ain't reality, yo. Yeah, like that ain't the reality I want my kids looking at. Right. I don't watch that shit. Right. I don't knock them for being on TV because mm-hmm. I know a few of them, but when it comes to like the culture, are they thinking about the culture or are they thinking about the check? Right, right, you right, know? right, and, like, right. Culture get thrown out the window when the numbers start to get, you know. And, and it, there you know, it we is. Lose, we lose the authenticity and shit. 
And, you know, there's a lot of shows that you see on TV that you love them, you love them, you love them, and all of a sudden you're like, what happened? Mm. Where they move something in, something else in, mm-hmm. and they always remember, they start moving you from day, you went from Wednesday to <laughs> Thursday to Friday. <laughs> and think about it, Friday what? Where are you doing on Friday? You're home. No, you're kicking it. You're out partying. Well, so it's like Fridays. some of us. Some of us. Now it's we it's got a Fridays. job. It's yeah. like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> got to make sure you come in here full of energy. It, Can't yeah. be out on, on Fridays no more. Yeah, Fridays is my Friday. It's like time, your, yeah. your, your right. time slot. Your I was, time I was slot. watching yeah. Jamie Foxx show last night. Like, damn, it's 1 o'clock in the morning. But that should be keeping me up to like 4. I, I do it. Martin first and then Jamie. I got to pick. I got Some nights is Martin. I didn't see every episode. But you know what's dope about Martin? Um, the old episodes, my daughter's 14, and I could sit down with my daughter and watch Martin, and we laughing at the same fucking joke. Oh, and I'm like, damn, hell. Martin is timeless. Like, me and me and Brooke is laughing, like, cracking up. And I'm, I didn't see the shit probably, like, 40 times, yeah. and it's yeah. still funny. But when it's funny to her, and mm-hmm. me and her don't really, like, share the same jokes, I'm like, wow. Martin's great. Yeah. He's, he's the greatest. Mm-hmm. And Jamie I always Fox say, too, yo. I always say, you know, the one... Let me tell you, one comedian I respect, well, I, I respect all the comedians, but mm-hmm. you know, one comedian I respect the utmost is Eddie Murphy. Yes. Because yes. Eddie Murphy did something that nobody else did and has not done yet. And I'm trying to, I'm trying to poke what some did, of my did? guys that do. He did Harlem Nights and all those people he had in that movie. You know how many egos he had in that movie? Oh, man. Red Fox. Richard Fives. Pryor wanted Richard to play Pryor. Eddie Murphy's role. Mm, I didn't even like, know that. Yeah, he was like, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. He's like, hold on, hold on, hold on. He's like, I got something for you, uh, Rich. I want you to play this. But think about it. You had Della Reese. Mm. You had Red Fox. Uh, Red Fox. You had, um, what's the name? Robert uh, to, um, uh, Bernie Mac. Bernie Mac. You had um, Robin Harris. Robin, Robin Harris. Harris. Yeah. You had so many greats. Think about that. To yeah. put so many greats in one film. Yeah. When's the last time you seen it? They all, they all passed away, too. They all passed away. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so that's why this new generation, we got to adapt the old generation and recreate. Because mm-hmm. that's what, that's what I'm about. saying. It's a, it's a lack of communication with the new generation. It's a huge gap. Right. They not listening, and we don't care. Right. But it's also a responsibility to it is a responsibility. the parents yeah, to yeah, is, show yeah. their kids those films. Yeah. Because yeah. that's what's yeah. going to keep those films alive. That's so. why I keep it real. You come, my, my kid, I watch everything. So my kids, they've seen all of the old films. They see I watch some of the new stuff with them. We listen to old music. I listen yeah. to their new stuff. It's like I think you have to give them a balance. You have to find your balance yeah. to, to be relatable for the future, or we will get left behind. Yeah. Bro, I had my daughter sit down and watch all the roots. The, y'all know roots. Yeah, I, oh, yeah. Do, I, I, do I, that. I had Alex, it right. Alex I had, had to watch roots. Yeah, because I, like, Cause I said if you don't <laughs> you educate watch. them, they mm-hmm. will not know. Yeah, and of course we not they're not they're not teaching in schools, so you got to give everybody that. Yeah, I make my daughter I make my daughter watch the uh, Emmett Till documentary. Emmett Till, yeah, I, like I was just talking about that out there to him. Mm-hmm. But I heard they need to make line. a movie they on that, and yeah. this is the right time yes. for that. They need to make a movie on Emmett Till because the whole thing that's going on now with Bill Cosby. And they're saying, if you put Bill Cosby in jail, don't get me wrong. Yeah. What a person does that's wrong, they should go to jail for yeah. it. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, if you're going to put Bill Cosby in jail for doing what he did, then you have to put the woman in jail mm-hmm. who said that Emmett Till did not whistle at her. She died, though, right? Who, Emmett Till? No, the died lady. She died. She, she no, died. she's still alive. She's still, no, I thought she's still, she, alive. I thought she still alive. alive. No, she's still alive. No, she's, she's like 86. Her name's right? like, like Carol yeah. Bryant or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. In jail she's still alive. Put her in jail. Yeah, for real. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because how could she just openly be like, I lied and just right. nothing? I mean, the 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 gift in the Emmett Till situation is, is you had something that shined the light on what was going on. That was, there was, you know, his mother, to me, his mom is the real gangster in the situation oh. because she had the open casket. casket yeah. she, she used her son as an example of yeah. what was going on that they were trying to keep on the low. Yeah. And that's what, you know, really sparked the civil rights movement in a way. And it, and it made a, some sort of a like a change mm. that you know because they couldn't hide behind it. I mean, right. look what they did to uh, Emmett Till, mm. and Man. you know that's why I make my daughter watch. I'm like, you gotta watch that. Yeah. You, guys are, you guys gonna see this documentary? I'm doing this documentary right now. It's on my father. Mm. My father is Dr. Amos E. Brown. Okay. And my father's from Mississippi. Mm. My father's mentor was Mega Evers. Oh shit. Mega Evers brought my father to Martin Luther King at the age of 15. My father was the president of the NAACP Youth at the age of 15. 
Martin Luther King, I mean, uh, Martin Luther King told my father to go to Morehouse. He went to Morehouse. Martin Luther King only taught one semester at Morehouse. He taught eight students. Julian Bond, my father, and six others. I'm doing a documentary, a documentary right now called King's Disciples because mm. all eight of them went on that civil rights movement with King, mm. went to jail, sit-ins, everything. I said my father flew, because my father's up in the Bay Area. He flew down, sat with me for with my cameraman, we sat for three hours. We felt like we went back in time. He told us all the stuff with him and King, all the stuff. I'm sitting there going, wow. and I'm the son. We need to bring you your dad on this show. Yo, we gotta get that, <laughs> we gotta get that real. type of stuff. And when he come in town, yo, bring him. He, I'm telling you, man, he will have y'all going. He went on uh, Jamie Foxx's um, Sirius Radio. Okay, when they was t- getting everybody to vote, and he dropped so much knowledge. Everybody was like, "It's man." Yeah, I'm like, but wow. it's. I sit there and I go. Yeah, I need that. I need that interview on every every place. And I love that because I've always been someone who could hang out with a child to the oldest person because I love getting the knowledge, you know, and just like really admiring like what they went through and understand that I'm gonna probably go through some of the same things. So I need to listen and not just hear. So I really love that. And I and I love that your story is so inspiring and you're very inspirational, oh, and you. you are doing amazing things. I love the Indie Nights. I hope that you continue to manifest that. I know you will. Yeah. And you guys, please come down. Yeah, of man. Please That's come yeah. down because, you know, I, let me tell you something. Even videos, I mean, I showcase videos because mm-hmm. given every every artist, you know, has videos they want to show, yo, let's do it. Because my thing is, it's giving everybody the opportunity to show your art. And like I said, if, if I don't, that's why I said God put me on this earth to give everybody an opportunity to create and go to the next level. And, you know, I always say, you put out, it'll come back and you'll get received. You know what I'm saying? So that's love. this is what Indie that's Night love. is all about. That's love. And God is love. So tell us really quick, where can we find you? What's you can your find social me. Media? Um, I'm at Dave Brown USA, at Dave Brown USA. Uh, Indie Night is at Indie Night, I-N-D-I-E, N-I-G-H-T-F-F, Indie Night, F-F. And Indie Night is every Saturday from 2.30 to 5.30. So I gotta go to even today and get everything going, get everything <laughs> right, set up. Yeah. Hurry up and yeah. get. <laughs> Giving everybody an opportunity. Man, thank you for taking time to come to the hey, fix, man. Thank you. And hey. I, I definitely, when right. your dad comes in town, yeah, man, I'm gonna bring him down. Definitely. I got a whole hour and a half slot for y'all. We can do this thing, <laughs> Yo, man. Let's do it. I'm serious. For real. Hey, I'm, I'm serious too. I'll make it happen. Man, I'll make it happen. Man, we just gonna cut the mics on and let him do his thing. Let's <laughs> Drop do that it. knowledge. Let's do it. I appreciate you guys letting me come through, oh, man, yeah. and bless with you guys. Definitely. Of course. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So what we are gonna do is take a quick break and we are gonna come back with the next guest. You listen to the fix on Dash Talk X and on the Fix app. This is our Two, the bonus edition. Let's go. Let's go. go.